Hi, my name is Bob Capicilli. I'm a licensed land surveyor, and on behalf of the New York State Association of Professional Land Surveyors, I'd like to tell you how to read a survey map. First, we'll want to identify a few elements of the map, such as the north arrow and the legend. The north arrow indicates the direction of the north to help us orient the location of the boundary on the ground. The legend shows different line types and symbols, which represent some of the features we'll find on your property. Now we'll look at six major parts of the map that will help you interpret your survey. First is encroachments. There are potential boundary issues that involve a feature on site that crosses over a boundary line. Sheds, patios, decks, fences, or a driveway are all potential encroachments. These should be clearly called out on the map and indicated with a distance extending over the boundary line. In the example in this case, we don't have an encroachment, but we have a chain link fence that falls directly on the property line and it's called out as such. Next are easements. These are rights to your property that may be granted to another person or entity for a specific use. Examples are including access easement for a shared driveway or a utility easement for the power company to maintain their electric poles and lines. In this instance, it's for a shared asphalt driveway easement and you can see that the deed book and page is clearly called out. Next is title block and notes. This shows specific information pertaining to the subject property, which clearly identifies the parcel being surveyed and the client it was surveyed for. It will also contain information about the surveyor who completed the map and will identify any conditions unique to the parcel that have been observed. This also shows our deed reference for the current deed for the property, our tax parcel number, which should be on file with the county or municipality, an area showing the square footage or acreage of the property, certifications which is who the map can be used for in the case of a mortgage property it will usually be the homeowner the lender or the bank and the title company and also the date of the survey and when it was completed next are special use and restrictions zoning regulations such as building setback lines will sometimes be shown on the survey these indicate the buildable area within a parcel where a structure may be placed to keep a buffer between buildings on adjoining properties. The property being located within a flood zone or wetland area could also impact placement of buildings or introduce specific restrictions on the parcel. Next is the right of way. Sometimes our parcels are identified as being bounded by the center line of a road. In most cases, unless the road is private, there will be a right-of-way line shown which indicates the area in which your municipality can use to construct and maintain the road, place utilities, and for public to travel. Here you'll see on a road line that it's indicated as a county route. It could also be a state route or a local highway. That indicates who maintains the road. There also may be a specific width of the road that could be indicated on your map. last is your boundary line labels. The boundary will be noted with bearings and distances, also referred to as meets and bounds, indicating the direction and length of each line on the parcel, or it could contain interior angles at each corner to show the relationship between lines. If a boundary marker can be identified on the ground, it could be used as a starting point to follow the property line and find other boundary markers that indicate the parcel corners. Thanks for listening. I hope this has been informative and helpful.